we know that a lot of teams have been bringing floor upgrades onto the car, right? And that's been like the major upgrade that people have brought to Baku and to Miami. But, you know, there are a lot of opinions about how floors work and the kind of description that teams put out in terms of what they're really changing, but you don't really get to know what's happening. So in this, probably in this video, I'd like to touch upon how the floor works and then jump into some of the upgrades that McLaren have brought. So McLaren brought these upgrades um, in Baku and it was strange because they've had a really miserable start to the, to the entire 2023 season. And even though Baku was a sprint weekend, not really an ideal place to, you know, to test your upgrades, they still dedicated Piastri to kind of testing the floor. And it was really important for them to try and understand that. And there were signs that it worked for them in Baku, but the performance in Miami kind of states that they haven't really understood what is the sweet spot for the upgrades. So let us see what the floor does and what is the main objective of the floor. So just to get a bigger, a more global picture, um, you can think about the floor as, you know, you can divide the floor into three phases, like the front floor, the mid floor, and the rear floor. And the main objective of this floor is to, you know, generate the maximum amount of downforce, but even more importantly, generate that consistently across all the attitudes that the car goes through in your, with varying ride heights, and it has to be consistent throughout all those phases, right? So let us look at some pictures that, uh, with a small project that I've done with Pure Power Racing, and I'll use that picture to try and then go through each phase of the floor and what it does. So in this photo, you can see basically the underside and you can see all the vortex structures that are going through the floor. And what you can observe here is if we come to the front floor, which basically is the floor intake and the strakes, um, the strakes play a huge role as each of them sheds a vortex structure and the inboard fences and the outboard fences both have different roles in a way. The inboard fences are more responsible towards generating a strong vortex, which lands up dropping the base pressure in the floor itself, which allows the floor to generate a lot of downforce. And the outer fences are more involved towards front tire wake management, making sure none of that front tire wake gets seeped inside the floor. And basically the entire point of, um, you know, the inboard fences is that you have a discrete structure that gets shed from each of them. And then all of them combine to create this really powerful structure that travels through the floor. And that is where the mid floor comes into picture because the mid floor is mostly responsible for managing the, the vortex merging process and how the strength and the health of the vortex is carried down through the mid floor towards the rear floor. And then the mid floor also has the floor edges that we see teams making changes to. And what this floor edges do is they kind of replace the skirts. They create that outwash onto the floor edge. Because if you do not create that because of the suction and the low pressure inside the floor, then seems to be a lot of inwash that comes into the floor. And that kind of really limits the amount of performance that you can extract from the floor. But, you know, F1 aerodynamics is not so straightforward. So there is some bleeding of air into the mid floor. And that is really controlled depending on how your vortex structure is you know, how they're traveling through the floor and how you're managing that. And that you can see from the small cutouts that teams have on their floor edges. And then if you've got all of this right, correct, you'll end up going to the rear floor. And the entire job, you can think about the rear floor basically as the diffuser kick line and the diffuser. And the, the main job of the rear floor bit is to make sure that these vortex structures, which is now merged, really powerful, um, as they go through the diffuser kick line, where there is the, you know, you know, where basically the expansion of the diffuser begins, you start landing up going into an adverse pressure gradient. And entire function of the rear floor is to make sure that these vortices are delivered into the diffusers in a healthy manner. Because if they are not, then they land up bursting and they land up limiting the performance of the diffuser. But these vortices are really important because these vortices are what allows the diffusion expansion to be really, really aggressive. And then teams have to manage them because it's an adverse pressure gradient in which these vortex structures are going. And that is basically responsible for some of the 
vortex bursting phenomena that you see, especially with ride height. And if you see some of the mouse hole cutouts, as they're so famous, you know, uh, we have names for every small bits in Formula One. So these mouse hole cutouts, they are responsible and really, really powerful devices to make sure that, uh, especially at low ride heights, there is enough axial velocity, there is enough um, free stream energy going into the diffuser to make sure that this that these structures inside the diffuser are carried along without bursting. And that is basically the, you know, what the floor is responsible for from a top level. Can I, just one thing that really caught my attention there, Shervin, a great explanation is the going back to the mid floor section, when you said that the, the, the floor edges are effectively the 2023 version of what we used to call skirts. And I'm just, you know, at the top of my head, am I, and I see you've got the Adrian Newey book behind you there. Do, do we think it could be as simple as that, that Red Bull have just done a better job with effectively creating skirts to contain um, the, the, these vortices and this air? Well, very much. I, so, Peter, what's really interesting from what I've understood is the sensitivity of the tools that you're using to develop the floor edges. So you have to make sure that you just don't design and believe what you see because um, you have to, there's so many variables into picture, right? There is track roughness. There is how accurate is your CFD. There's, you know, how accurate is your front wheel wake? So um, I'm pretty sure Red Bull must have invested a lot of time investigating these basics upon which they must, must have built the foundation because that is where Adrian knew his vision came. Like he would have known that there are so many variables at play that you need to get the fundamentals right before you actually build upon, um, you know, structures that you can kind of trust. And I think that is where the strength of, you know, of Radian Newey's experience came in with, came in with um, the aerodynamicists at Red Bull. And they were able to build something that they could trust and build it in a large operating window. And how much of a factor do we think the Red Bull front suspension layout is the anti-dive? Again, I think um, the the fact it's not the suspension layout that kind of you know is the game changer. It's about the aero platform, the kind of aero platform that we've been able to provide, um, or the suspension, sorry, provides to the aero to make sure that it works in the operating things that Red Bull must have optimized going from 2022 to 2023. You know, they must have had all this data where they realized this should be our operating window where we can extract a lot of performance and then design their suspension around it uh, to make sure that the aero platform remains in that operating window as you go through different tracks around the world. So it's not the deciding factor, but it's an enabling factor to make sure that the aero works to its utmost limit. Now, I know we're going to get on in a second to McLaren. I'm looking forward to that. But before we go from this, this generic discussion about the floor, can we? Can I just pick your brains if, if that effectively is, I don't know, let's say that's the Red Bull RB19 using the air pretty well. What do you think the underside of the Mercedes looks like with its zero pod layout, so-called, when it's out of its operating window, so-called? Um, well, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. Um, so... I've done the CFD or we've done some crude CFD of the W14 as well, right? And we can't really say much about what's happening on the in, on the underfloor. Obviously, if they are not able to run as low ride heights as, as Red Bull is, then their structures will not be as powerful or might be a bit lossy compared to what Red Bull is. But the main factor is Sorry, that... Sorry, might be, might be a bit what? That might be a bit what? might be a bit lossier uh, in terms yeah. of how the merging process happens. But again, this is a very far-fetched speculation. It's like really hard to imitate what these flows look like and to even try and do CFD because even like how Andrea Stella has come on and said that millimeters can make a huge difference. We've done we've done a CFD comparison of the, um, of the Ferrari type of side pods and the Mercedes side pods from what we see in the exterior. But to do anything with the floor edge and the floor, is really kind of difficult and really difficult to know, to be honest. Okay, we'll come back, to you, in a couple, we'll come back to you in a couple of weeks when you got all that sorted for us on CFD. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially if somebody crashes and shows us the floor, which is the big problem. We haven't seen a 2023 floor because the marshals have been explicitly told not to lift the car without having an absolute need to lift the car where the floor is shown. Now let's move on to McLaren, which is something we have seen or we think we understand. 
So this floor, basically what it tries to do is it manages the suction and how um, the distribution of suction is throughout the floor, which would mean that, you know, trying to read in between the lines, it would mean that they've gone from a different front, from a different floor philosophy, which they earlier had. There have been some reports again saying that they've understood the Red Bull flow philosophy from last year's floor and tried to imitate that and found a lot of performance, which kind of led them to deviate from their path, from their own development path. And that is why there is this delay in updates because they've started chasing a new flow philosophy direction. You know, you can see some bulges, which basically allude to some intricate work that they've, they've learned over the past week in terms of how they land up managing the uh, vortex structures that we were talking about. So if you leave, if you read into the official description, what they've said is that the vortex structures are now repositioned and the way we manage the strength and the health of those vortex structures is, is much different than what it was before. And, you know, this basically alludes to what I was saying earlier, that their mid floor geometry and their floor edges have changed to exactly make sure that their, no, their new floor philosophy ensures the kind of um, pressure gradient that is required by the vortex structures in order to be uh, strong and healthy as it goes all the way to the diffuser. If you look at the strakes, like the exit of the strakes, uh, you can see that there have been some small bulges and the strakes are a bit more aggressive. In addition to that, there is like uh, the cutout at the rear end that's changed. Uh, earlier, they used to have a winglet all the way to the cutout. Now they have a cutout in isolation and the winglet is like moved forwards. Um, so it's again like redistribution of vorticity to make sure that uh, it complements their floor philosophy. So that's the that's the, the floor edge. Let's have a look at the rear wing of the McLaren. You can see that, you know, at the start of the year, they were basically the slowest car on the grid. Like their speed traps were ridiculously bad compared to anybody else. And we're talking about like 15, 20 kilometer per hour difference. So at Baku, they came up with this really offloaded uh, beam wing that you can see here. And basically, um, you know, normally you see two element beam wing really cranked up. But in this case, like the second element sits quite high. So almost like a biplane design instead of a, um, you know, instead of a conventional two element wing. So they have almost like a neutral element on top, which would help them to reduce drag substantially. And also they got new rear wing and different flap designs and flap trims to try out depending on what the speed sensitivity of the track was. So, you know, you can see some upgrades on the rear wing and on the beam wing to kind of tackle the drag problem that they have. And it did help them. Like if you check the speed traps, they were not as far as they were, but they're still like at least eight to nine kilometers down, not from the Red Bulls, but from the other top three, the Red Bulls are in a league of their own in a way.